Good morning. Thank you for being here as we remember Helen today and gather our voices and hearts in praise of our risen Christ. You received a bulletin that will guide you through our worship service. The things that are printed in bold are the parts that you join together in speaking, and you'll need to find a red hymnal, which is in the pew rack in front of you. It might be underneath your seat if you're sitting up front. Um, there may also be hymnals underneath the seat that is in front of you. So the red hymnal ha doesn't say Holy Bible. It has an embossed um, cross on the cover, and our hymns, our singing together, is found in there. As we worship this morning, we'll also celebrate Holy Communion as a connection to all of God's saints gathered at Christ's table. Everyone is welcome at communion. Our tradition celebrates an open table, and so you will be invited to come forward to kneel or stand at the altar rail. We provide a gluten-free option. If you need that, you pick it up as you come forward. Once you are at the rail, our team of servers will come by, offering you bread that you can receive with open hands. Second server has a tray of small glasses. If you wine, it's red. If you prefer grape juice, it is white. And then our third server has the place that you put your empty cup before you return to your seat by the side aisle. I'll provide a little bit more guidance as we get to that point in the service. We turn our hearts to Christ's presence. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We're gathered to worship to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our sister Helen, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. All who are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In her baptism, Helen was clothed with Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, she shall be clothed with glory. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. 
Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Please remain seated. We'll be singing together the hymn, How Great Thou Art, which is found in the Red Hymnal. It's hymn 856, and it is at the, near the back of the hymnal. The page numbers are at the top of the page.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Helen. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we're gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our service continues with some reflections and remembrances from family. We begin with Dean. Sorry, I scribbled this together last night, trying to put my thoughts together. I'd like to start by thanking everybody who made it here today. I know a lot of people travel very far, and I appreciate it. Um, also, I want to thank the family for allowing me to come up here and say a few words. It means a lot to me. We are here today to celebrate the life of Helen Marie McDonald, or who I simply like to call Grandma. If our perception of people, places, and events make up our realities, this is my perception of her and the reality of who we, she was to me. We all had different experiences with her, as we do with everybody. Everybody's relationship is special. Um, I'll just tell you how I, how I described her to, to friends of mine. She's a fiery little old lady from New York. <laughs> she's, been in, she's been in this state longer than most of us have been alive in the family. And that was all 100% New York in her. Um, she was never afraid to let you know what was on her mind. Um, I even understand uh, some of the ladies at the Elks used to call her the sergeant. <laughs> and I believe it. I was, I was a real sergeant. I, I didn't have as command presence as she did. Um, she also carried a lot of, of very sweet, wonderful traits. As, as tough as she was on the outside, she was a sweetheart. Every time we get together as a family, she knew I was gonna be there, she'd make my favorite, Watergate salad. I never knew what it was, it was a green mush, but it was delicious. <laughs> and she would always make that. And, I, and she'd always come and tell me I made that just for you. Um, she also taught me uh, the, about the strength in women. She was a very strong person. I don't think I ever saw her back down from a single thing. If she was happy or mad, she was pursuing what was on her mind. Um, there were so many stories that went through my head last night. I'm trying to remember some of them, but I do remember she always had, she had a very command presence. She also had one of the sweetest smiles you've ever. It would just light up the room. And her laugh was so contagious, it was amazing. I also know when she got older, I was telling my Karen this earlier, that she had a little bit of dental work back here. And I knew I made her laugh well when I could see that dental work. I always <laughs> loved seeing it. Just a little bracket or something. Um, I will miss her dearly, as I know I'm sure many of us will. Um, she just kind of said, uh, she is a, a, a positive piece of, of everything I, I was growing up and um, for the good or the bad. And you best believe, if grandma told you to be quiet when you're sleeping down in the basement, <laughs> you best be. She had like a, I don't know, six Dan black belt and wooden spoonology or something. <laughs> she was quick, it was very swift, and it was brutal sometimes. <laughs> And I'm sorry if I'm shocking anybody. You know, it just, it means you're too young. Ask a Gen X or her up. I hate to say that. We don't understand you. You don't understand us. We, I don't hold anything against her for it because I, I, I'm sure I deserved it. Um, I remember one of the last times I was able to see her and I went out with her and uh, my Uncle Chris. 
and she was always quick to tell me, I'm not your real grandmother. And I don't know, last time I was like, Grandma, you need to stop saying that. You are my grandma. I never knew my other grandma. I've always known you. You're no different to me than my other biologically attached grandma was to me. So I said, and I love you very much. And the sweetest, sweetest way she could, she said in her, her a little bit kind of frail voice, well, I love you very much too, Dean. And it just, that, that moment has stuck with me and will stick with me forever. Um, Well, as I normally say, that's about all I have to say about that. <laughs> um, thank you, and I'd love to hear, you know, other people's memories of her, and I know we've got a lot of them. Grandma, was, she was a very unique, special person. She was never a, a cookies and, and milk kind of grandma, but sometimes. But for the most part, if you knew her, that wasn't her. And I, and I wouldn't have had her, I wouldn't have wanted her any other way. She was just special. I love her very much, and thank you for being here again today. Good morning. I'm Liz McDonald, and I am, as um, Grandma would always tell me, the first female grandchild. <laughs> So, um, I'm going to reiterate a, a lot of what you said, but uh, I wrote a little poem. In memory of my grandma, fierce and bold, whose lessons shaped me young and old, from bargain hunts and bustling aisles to standing tall amidst life's trials. For tribulation she knew too well, but in her heart resilience dwelled. Her husband gone when her kids were small. She faced the challenge, standing tall. With three little ones to raise alone, she built a haven, a loving home. But fate had more in its intricate plan as a new chapter in her life began. She remarried a man with five of his own. Together they faced what life had thrown, a true Brady Bunch blended with care, a family bond beyond compare. She became the matriarch, wise and kind, with open arms and heart aligned, eight children now under her wing, a testament to the love she'd bring. She taught me more than just the art of finding deals with a cunning heart. She showed me strength in word and deed, to never settle nor concede. Against the tide of patriarchal sway, she showed her granddaughter the way. With strength and wit, she'd never bend, a true role model until the end. Against grandpa's charm, she'd hold her ground. With wit and wisdom, she'd astound. The only one who dared to speak against his cantankerous streak. <laughs> oh shit, a card game she taught me to play when I was far too young to be speaking in that way. <laughs> but laughter filled those youthful days, learning from her in so many ways. In the motorhome, we roamed with Lee, Grandma and Grandpa, Zach and me, through winding roads and landscapes wide, adventures aplenty with joy as our guide. Yet amidst the laughter, a rule to obey. Don't mount the teepee in the wrong way. <laughs> For Grandma's wrath, though seldom shown, could spark a tempest all on her own. In sweepstakes, she was a queen, with victories like I've never seen. And at the bingo mine, a sight to see, three cards at once was her strategy. <laughs> but as time passed and days grew hard, the time came for her to play her final card. Now she's at peace, no more pain to bear. Her spirit soars, free from despair. I love and miss her with each passing day, but her legacy in my heart will stay. 
a fierce grandma forever in my soul, whose lessons and love will make me whole. Thank you. We continue with scripture readings that have been chosen by the family. That poem kind of had some of the spirit of this verse. That's why I chose this verse. (laughs) Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40. And a reading from Romans 8. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And a reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. It's always hard to share the news in our church community that a beloved member has died, but there are gifts that as that information is conveyed, I get to hear memories that people have of Helen. I love that these things I chose have already been echoed by her family. I've been reminded of Helen's role setting up the blood drives here at our church and how she would post herself at the door to make sure that you got where you needed to go at the appropriate time. And then she'd work the room a bit, checking on you and guaranteeing you were eating your cookies before you drove yourself home. She had that reputation for entering sweepstakes and contests, and I loved her twinkling eyes when she told the stories of her wins. And one of the things I loved most about Helen was her straightforward style. I think it endeared her, obviously to her family, as we have heard, but to the generations of students that she taught, and certainly to the youth here at church as she worked with our confirmation and vacation Bible school programs. Kids can usually tell when you're not being authentic, and we always got to know authentic Helen, what she was thinking, and she would tell us exactly what was on her mind. One of my favorite stories she told is that when she'd be out and about in the Louisville community and students from years past would approach and greet Mrs. Mack, she would usually tell them that she just needed to be reminded who they were because they don't look the way they did in middle school. (laughs) I know that Jesus and Helen are getting along right now, and she would appreciate the choosing of this reading from John 14, because this is Jesus' straightforward style. Jesus is speaking to his disciples in the gospel today, and he's trying to prepare them for what is coming next. It's a time that's tense and uncertain. The Authorities are feeling threatened and have their ideas about what should happen to Jesus. The path is becoming clearer that Jesus is about to be arrested. It's a challenging time of worry and grief. And it's been a full night for Jesus and his friends before he speaks these words. 
They shared a meal that we now call the Last Supper. And then Jesus knelt to wash his disciples' feet, which made them rather uncomfortable. And he taught them a lesson of a new command, commandment to love one another as he has loved them. Judas just left the room carrying a purse of silver. So Jesus is reassuring, teaching, and talking them through all that they are experiencing. The disciples understand that this is an important conversation, that what Jesus is doing in these moments matters. But like any good Jesus follower, they're not completely getting it. They don't remember everything that Jesus has said before or understand exactly what it is that's happening. So Jesus doesn't mince any words. Do not be afraid. Believe. There is space for all of you. We will be together. The disciples don't need flowery explanations or vague theories about what's going to happen. They need words that they can repeat and stand on. And they need a picture of what is to come. A big house with many dwelling places. And that is an image we know Helen was already familiar with. Jesus gives us a place to imagine that a door will be open to you. You will be welcome in comfort and connection. In our grief and wondering, in Helen's grief and wondering, there is an assurance in that big house and a straightforward promise that Jesus has gone before and will be there when we arrive. As Helen cared for others in her family, in her classroom, in her church community, as she enjoyed life's little delights and surprises and shaped the lives of many, she trusted that she was walking in Jesus' footsteps. In her last weeks, she spoke of God as the one who would relieve pain and be her place of comfort. She trusted that though she couldn't describe exactly what the next day or next life would hold, that she would never be alone. The Christ was just ahead of her, preparing a place. A place for remembering, a place for loss, a place for love. For where we are, Christ is here also. Thanks be to God. Amen. We will join in singing together the hymn, Borning Cry, which is number 732. shut your weary eyes. 
spin with just one more surprise. I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see With the whole church, let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you've knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Today, we commend to you our sister Helen, and we remember all who've gone before us, especially Jonathan, Matthew, Al, and Mac. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Give comfort and healing to those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Gather all whom you fearfully and wonderfully made. Inspire us to generosity that overflows to serve all people in need, especially those who feel alone and forgotten. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn and assure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. Shine light on all those who travel, that their journeys be safe and their homecomings joyful. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also and that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand as we are invited to Christ's table. This simple meal was one of Jesus's gifts to his followers, and it continues to gather us, opening our imaginations again to a table that stretches beyond space and time, a table where Helen now sits and all the beloved who have gone before us. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, I invite us to pray the Lord's Prayer together. If you'd like to follow along, it is printed in your bulletin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome at Christ's table. Please be seated for a moment. I'll prepare our servers, and then ushers will guide you forward to stand or kneel at the altar rail. The gluten-free option will be at the head of the aisle. And a reminder that this is a wide open table for all of God's people. Thank you. 
Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you've refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you, and in fervent lo love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us commend Helen to the mercy of God our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Helen. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. The Lord bless her and keep her. 
The Lord's face shine on her with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon her with favor and give her peace. Amen. Rest eternal grant her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. Please stand as we sing together the hymn Amazing Grace, number 779 in your hymnal. Helen's family invites you to a time for lunch and sharing memories at the Tri-City Elks Club in downtown Louisville. The location is printed on the back of your bulletin. Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, now and forever. Amen. Let us go in peace. Amen. You may be seated.